Hi, my name is Jody Young hughes I work for the University of Minnesota Extension. In this series of videos, we're going to learn about what is compaction, how to build a healthy soil to resist compaction, and what equipment and tire choices are out there to help minimize the effects of compaction in your fields. In September of 2011, the University of Minnesota Extension partnered with NDSU, commodity groups, and equipment manufacturers to hold a unique field day near Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Four soil pits were created to demonstrate different management techniques to help take control of soil compaction. This video is the third in a series of four to help identify compaction and manage it in your fields. Randy Taylor, an ag engineer with Oklahoma State University, spoke to us about tracks and tires and managing field traffic to reduce soil compaction. Soil compaction is generally categorized as shallow or deep. Shallow compaction is confined to the top six to eight inches of the soil, and it's directly related to the pressure that is applied to the soil. For tires, your ground pressure is really close to the inflation pressure. Proper tire inflation pressure is based on your axle load, number of tires, and your tire size. Proper inflation of your tires is discussed in more depth in video number four of this series. To calculate the ground pressure for a track, you take the length and the width of that track and the weight that is supported by that track. It becomes a little more complex when computing ground pressure for a track vehicle because of the bogey wheels. While a track may have an average ground pressure of 5 psi, there are pressure spikes under the bogey wheels bringing up the average pressure overall. For both tracks and tires, a higher ground pressure will relate to more compaction than a lower ground pressure. That's why it's important to know whether you have tracks or tires, what kind of pressure is being put on the soil. Proper tire inflation for road speed may be two to three times higher than for proper inflation in the field. Using the road inflation rates in the field will create more compaction and could reduce yield. While it can be inconvenient to adjust your tire pressure, it's worth the hassle to minimize the compaction potential. One of the advantages to tracks is that there's no tire inflation adjustments to make. Deep compaction occurs below 8 inches and is related to the force applied to the soil or the axle load. More weight on the axle means deeper compaction. The weight of larger tractors, combines, and grain carts can force compaction down to a depth of 3 to 4 feet. Since depth of compaction is based on your axle load, both tracked and tired vehicles can create deep compaction. While they both can create compaction, there are advantages to each system. Tires have greater stability, less vibration, lower initial cost, easier handling on your contours and turning at the edges of fields, and they have a minimal weight transfer effect. Tracks, on the other hand, have better flotation and better ride quality in rough fields. They have less slippage and no power hop, and they have better fuel efficiency in soft fields. Managing your vehicle traffic is one way to reduce your compaction. About 80% of the compaction happens on the first pass. I'll repeat that. About 80% of the compaction occurs on the first pass. Use this to your advantage. In a normal year, as much as 90% of the field may be tracked by equipment. If you use the planter, the sprayer, the combine, the grain carts, and do tillage passes across the field, these are all making separate tracks. The philosophy behind controlled traffic is to restrict the amount of soil driven on by reusing the same wheel tracks or tram lines. By controlling traffic, the tracked area is meant to be compressed, similar to a road, while the soil between the tracks is not compacted. The benefits to controlled traffic are improved tractor efficiency and flotation, less horsepower needed, improved timeliness of your operations, reduced skips and overlaps, and improved soil quality. The philosophy is different than with minimizing compaction. Tall, narrow tires are important to minimize the area driven on in the field. Over time, you'll need to line up your equipment to follow in the combine tracks, such as your planter and sprayer. Also, track maintenance and RTK will become critical. If you want to try controlling traffic without committing to the entire program, start with the most compacting piece of equipment in your field, the grain cart. Since most of the compaction happens on the first pass, try driving your grain cart in the old combine tracks and head back out to the headlands to get to the field entrance. Don't take a diagonal across the field where you're going to create 80% more compaction across the field. When harvesting a small field or the fields are wet, 
or when growing a lower yielding crop like your soybeans, try unloading at the ends of the field instead of on the go. Your soil is a valuable resource when growing a healthy and profitable crop. Understanding the weight and pressure of your equipment and by minimizing your footprint, you're taking control of your soil compaction. Mm -hmm.